uh, the host is a professor, the moderator is a professor, all the speakers are professors. So I was uh, more or less being intimidated. <laughs> but uh, with the camera behind me, I have no fears <laughs> at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think uh, when we talk about the ifs in history, he uh, is one of the ifs. Because clearly, uh, in the Second Republic, when you had five major political parties, all the other four parties already had more or less their presidential candidates, except the MPN. And uh, he was the leading candidate himself and the Cheroba until there was a decision to bring in uh, Elijah Shehu Shagari, who, is, who said repeatedly that he didn't want to be president. So the question I asked myself is, had uh, Elijah not been stopped and he had become president, would the history of Nigeria have been different? Would we have avoided the 1983 coup? That is, if that had not happened, would Nigeria, you know, have avoided having the General Buhari as head of states, Ibabangida as head of states, and Abacha as head of states? That is a question. And so I think it was possible that the history of Nigeria would have been different had he been president rather than Alaji Shagari that was uh, a bit, uh, well, that was reluctant actually. Now, when that administration came into power, in 1980, 81, we had a lot of crisis in the universities. Actually, that government came in, it saw its regime. And so around the campuses, there was repression and suppression. I remember that we were trying to establish the National Association of Nigerian Student Nans, that the government moved in to create you know, other bodies like the National Nigeria Union of uh, you know, University Students. Now in 1981, we had serious crisis because in a place like ABU, 21 students were expelled, including eight of them in final year, final year students. The first president of NANS, Tenumu Yaku, came from BUK. He was expelled with the secretariat, so there was crisis. In Ife, where I, where I was a student, seven of us were killed at a demonstration. So we had serious problems, and the security forces went around. They called them NSO in those days, suppressing student activities and associations. So at the time, we, we came together and said, look, what do we do? We decided that since Nigeria was a leading force against apartheid, let us create an, you know, an apartheid youth movement. So we created one called USA, that is Youth Solidarity Against Apartheid. And it happened that Matama Sule was our representative in UN and was also the chairman of the UN Anti Apartheid Committee. So we decided to get in touch with him, to write him, to say, look, we want to set up a youth vanguard against apartheid in all campuses in Nigeria. Can you come and you know and they launch it for us? And he agreed. They came all the way from you know New York, and he launched it. Now the problem the Shagari government had was that now you had the chairman of the UN Anti-Apartheid Committee coming to launch an association. What do you do with such an association? Ban it. And so on all campuses we went around using the name of Maitama Suli to launch USA across you know uh, you know the country. And so, and he knew precisely what we were doing. Well, we had discussions with him. I was there when he launched the one in BUK. He knew exactly what we were doing, but he didn't mind. He felt that uh, you know, youths in the country had the, you know, the, the, the right to associate freely. And of course, to also express their views, which may not be common views. Right, so right. from that point, I want Thank to you. talk Thank on- Thank you, uh, 